So hello everyone. Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. From wherever you're joining in, my name is Prithvi Raj, as you know, and I've been leading the community efforts for the Litmus Kiosk project. And glad to see a lot of new folks joining in from from various teams. And I'm I'm glad to see that post uh, Chaos Carnival. I hope a lot of you were part of Chaos Carnival, of course. And there were some amazing Chaos Engineering talks that happened. We'll we'll be talking about that. But glad to see you all joining in. So as you know, uh, folks who are joining in knew the purpose of community calls is basically to talk about what exactly is happening in the community or with the project and, and for, for you to ask any questions or share updates as, as users. So obviously, we'll, we'll move to that. Uh, the, the new folks who are joining in can just talk about how you are planning to use Litmus or what exactly is the progress you have made. And then that uh, the maintainers or the contributors are also present here who you can ask your questions to and then we'll just be sharing what exactly is uh, has happened in the latest release and, and take you through a release note walkthrough and then sum up the call. So perhaps we can also have a quick call. We need not be keeping it for one hour, but hopefully you have as many questions as possible so that we, we can extend, of course. So moving on, I'll, I'll just share the agenda with you all. So I hope uh, my screen is visible. So today, obviously, we, we start off by introducing new members. And then, uh, as I mentioned, that there was the Chaos Carnival 22, which happened, and it had a lot of content on Litmus. It's all up on, on uh, the Chaos Carnival or the Chaos Native channel. And then we'll go through a release notes walkthrough with Vedant Shrutriya, who will also be covering uh, the new updates uh, with the Chaos Center or what exactly has happened in the Chaos Engineering community with Litmus. And then we'll open the floor for questions or if, if there are any other user stories or presentations we have, we'll open the floor for that. So before I move on to obviously talking about uh, the Litmus Kiosk feature at Kiosk Carnival 22, I'll allow the new members who have joined in to just quickly go through a round of introduction. So I see a lot of new folks. I'll, I'll go one by one. Abhinav, perhaps you can just unmute yourself and quickly introduce. Yeah, sure. Uh, I hope my voice is audible. Is it so? Yes, yes, of course it is. Okay, thanks, Prithvi. Uh, so my name is Avino. I'm currently uh, a Golang development intern at Nirmata, and I'm actively working on uh, improving and developing new features for the Kiverno project, uh, which is also one of the CNCF sandbox projects at the moment. And we have also like gladly applied for the incubating status recently, uh, just within a week or so earlier. And I was actually looking forward to becoming a part of a lot more uh, like CNCF projects, just as Litmus Chaos. And uh, that is prob probably the reason why I uh, actually volunteered myself to get at least somewhat familiar to the different uh, uh, aspects in which uh, Litmus is performing in the community as well as in the enterprise scenario. So yeah, that's it from my end. Thank you so much. Awesome, Abhinav. Uh, glad to see you here and looking forward to more contributions and questions from you in the community. Uh, so, Alexander, if you would just like to unmute and introduce yourself. Sure. I'm Alexander, and uh, so I'm using Lutmus at the moment in enterprise environment to get here more resilience and stability of an uh, envi of a environment which is already in place and has some strange behaviors from time to time, depending on load. So that's my main use case for it. And at the moment, we are here in setup phase and yeah, want to find here the correct experimentation for it to get here more insights about the application. Awesome, thanks a lot, uh, Alexander. Uh, pardon, uh, which team did you are you belonging to? Is it iFood by any chance? Uh, could you please repeat? I I, I just I, I forgot which team do you belong to? I mean, which team? Um, I'm here uh, for um, uh, development. It is more more or less development as a report where I'm located in, and that is here for getting here more uh, stability inside. Awesome, thanks, thanks a lot, Alexander. Looking forward to your questions in the community, of course. So next up, Francesco, I think uh, Francesco is another community member who has newly joined. You can introduce yourself. Yeah, thank you very much. So I'm based in Germany. I'm uh, actually working together with Alex as well. <laughs> we, are, uh, we are experimenting with uh, 
with the litmus of the customer. So I'm uh, an old uh, uh, SRE and um, there are also a couple of uh, videos uh, uh, on uh, YouTube. Uh, uh, I, I give it all to the SRE con and DevOps con and so on about security cause engineering. So I'm interested more on adding also uh, the security experiment in Litmus. Awesome, Francisco. I hope you have joined the community and I'll, I'll, we'll be looking forward to your questions and, and contributions, of course. Yep, thank you very much. Uh, perhaps we can quickly go to, uh, to John. Hey, um, so I'm really new to the Litmus community. I was just looking at open source projects, kind of wanted to contribute, and was really fascinated by the concept of chaos engineering. So just kind of very fresh to it and looking to see what it's all about. Awesome. Thanks a lot, John. Perhaps you can just take a quick look through the content that's available for Litmus already. That will help you get started for sure. Uh, Parnika, you can just introduce yourself. Yeah, I think uh, she's on mute. Uh, Rafael. Hey, everyone. Um, I'm super new to Litmos. Uh, I just changed my job. I joined a new team, and they want to do chaos engineering. Uh, so we decided to go on with Litmos uh, since yesterday. So right now, I'm trying to. Uh, um, yeah, to set it up on our environment and then we will see how it's going to work uh, if it's fine for our setup uh, and i'm here because i'm curious how the community is and uh, yeah that's all all right thanks thanks a lot rafael glad to see you here and we we hope that you come up with more questions and obviously contribute more to the community uh, I think we, we have another new member, Raj Shekhar. Perhaps you can just quickly introduce yourself. Hi, Prithvi. Uh, so as I, like my teammates already, Francisco and Alex, uh, they said like uh, we just started using Litmus Kios. So that is ongoing process. Thanks for the opportunity. Like where we are seeing a lot of experiments are available in the Kios Hub. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Thanks, thanks a lot, Raj Shekhar. Uh, Rajat, would you like to quickly introduce yourself? Uh, hey, hi everyone over here. So uh, I've just, uh, I've recently joined the uh, Pravega QE team uh, for, at Delhi MC. So there, uh, I think one of my teammates who is a part of community already, Somesh, he's already uh, working with the uh, Litmus Chaos tool. So I'm also keen on learning the new um, advancement being made over here. So that is why I'm here to learn more about the tool and understand what's upcoming. Thank you. All right, thanks. Thanks a lot, uh, Rajat. I think Richa and Somesh are also from the Pravega team and I'm, I'm glad to have uh, the Pravega team here. They have, they have been one of the users of Litmus. So thanks a lot for joining in the community call. Hope to see more progress from Pravega on the community side of things. Thanks, thanks a lot, Rajat. All right, folks, so let's get started. Uh, we'll obviously be talking about the Chaos Carnival feature, but I'll allow Vedant to go through the 2.2.6 release notes first. Just take us through what are the recent updates, what uh, has been updated on Litmus, and let's go through a quick demo on any, any new features on the Chaos Center, and then we'll obviously be talking about the Litmus Chaos feature at Chaos Carnival. So Vedant, you can, you can take it forward. Yeah, so hi everyone. Thanks, Sutri. Um, so first of all, uh, this is Vedant and I'm also a core contributor at Litmus Chaos. Uh, first of all, I uh, welcome you all to this meetup. Thanks for uh, joining in. So um, I will be uh, taking you through the walkthrough of the links notes for the latest list that we had um, yesterday, that is 2.6.0. So um, I'm just sharing my screen. So yeah, I hope um, it is visible. And I also hope that there's not much um, noise coming in from my side. So yeah, okay. So um, starting with the updates that we had. So firstly, um, this time we have added a, a new ENV that is CPU load in both the experiment that is uh, CPU related experiment that is node CPU hog and pod CPU hog to consume the percentage of the like CPU in terms of percentage. So um, if I, uh, 
show you the experiment that we had. So uh, here, uh, previously you were able to give the, you know, the number of posts that you want to consume, but uh, um, now you can also um, give that a same uh, variable, but in terms of the percentage, so how much percentage of CPU you want to consume, you can give that. So this one is for pod CPU hog and the same thing goes for node CPU hog as well. So there is, a, there is one more ENV that is added CPU load. So in node as well, there was already one variable that is node CPU hog. So you were able to give number of course, how much, you know, you want to consume, but now you can also give the, same thing in terms of percentage, like how much percentage of CPU you want to consume. So um, proceeding further, so there is a bug fix. Uh, I would say yeah, permission, permission fix that is that we have done in the experiment image. So there was issue coming in on the OpenShift clusters, like it wasn't able to um, access uh, one of the directories due to the permission issues. So that is fixed with this release. Then uh, there is an uh, inclusion of new experiment that we have done in the Litmus Python. Uh, that is, you know, with respect to AWS um, availability zone experiment. So that is, you know, to disable different availability zones and also from a list of availability zones for a particular load balancer. So there is a PR that we have tagged in, in the release note. Um, you can go through that for like some other details. There will be documentation available as well. And um, then, uh, there was there is a one more fix that we have done in chaos exporter so um now it won't you know export or override the matrix like in case uh, like when your chaos engine is already completed and the experiment is all you know already exported then um on the documentation side so in the last lease we had some inclusion of new um, envs that is jitter and also like for this lease that is cpu load so the experiments uh, example right so um, they have been added like for better understanding so you can um, go through this so uh, for documentation right uh, like uh, the, i see that there are some uh, new members as well. So there is a website that is hub.litmuskios.io. You can come here and um, different experiments you can check and click on clicking on those. You can, you know, get the details about them as well, right? Then, uh, so on the chaos center side, so I would say thanks to Victor. Uh, this this has this has been a great contribution. Allow uh, uh, like with this release, um, there is a new field added that is uh, executed by in the workflow runs table and the schedules table. So I will just um, show you that thing. So uh, for example, previously, right? Uh, for example, uh, you had a, a project and then there are multiple number of users in this project, right? Now, if those uh, multiple users are editors, then th they all can schedule workflows, right? So uh, if they are scheduling workflows and as an admin, you can't actually know, right? Who schedule which workflows, right? Now uh, with the current enhancement, there is a field added in the table that is executed by. So now uh, you will be able to see the username of that particular user who had scheduled this workflow. So in case now in your project, if you have uh, multiple number of use users and who are scheduling workflows, right? So you will be able to know who scheduled which workflow as well as in the schedules table, you will be able to see the same field as uh, last updated by that is like, for example, I'm the admin. So in uh, both the places it is showing admin. Now, uh, with the same uh, feature, like for example, because like if you are the old user, like or not, I would say, like if you are using the older versions of Chaos Center, that is for example, 2.5.0. So this feature wasn't there, right? So in case now you are upgrading, so for the older workflows, uh, like this column will be like this, like empty, it will be showing an hyphen, like because like previously this feature wasn't there. So we were not actually tracking the users, but now uh, after upgrading for those old workflows, it will be showing the hyphen, but like for the new workflows, it will show you the usernames of the particular users, right? And same goes for recurring workflow and non-recurring workflow or any. So in schedules like this field, right? Last updated by that is added. So why it is updated like, because like, for example, this workflow right here, recurring workflow. So a recurring workflow can also be edited here, right? So in terms of editing, you can, you know, change the um, schedule of this particular workflow. So you want to know who, you know, last time who updated that particular um, schedule of that workflow, you can just come here and check like uh, this column right here. So um, with this, I'm going to the next update. So uh, yeah, 
So there was there is a bug fix done on the UI as well as on the backend side. So for example, like this was uh, there. So for example, if you are using 2.5.0 version of Chaos Center, and for example, let me just show you. So if you come here, we have the facility to delete a particular schedules, right? So like uh, in the previous like versions, if you have deleted it, this schedule and you try to you know schedule a new workflow with the same name, then it it will give you an error, right? Like uh, this. Uh, workflow already exists because like we don't actually you know uh, when you click on delete schedule we don't actually delete that schedule we there is a field that we you know make it um enable that is true is removed so that we do like that is for the you know for your uh backup purpose like in case you want to see your deleted workflows you know so that is there so but um now uh, with this release the same facility will be there but uh, in case now you are able trying to schedule a new workflow with the same name of the workflow that was deleted it will uh, work the workflow will be there in the db only it will be ignored because it was uh, deleted right so the name check will will work like that then uh, there is a update for the vulnerability. So we have um, we are, have been making some um, um, efforts on lowering down the vulnerabilities in our Docker images right here and there. So that is there. And then uh, there is a, now uh, we have started efforts on uh, you know adding API tests. So currently we have uh, got a good set of API tests for MyHub and user related operations. So this is uh, why it is done because like you know now in our community we see that a uh, uh, good number of users are trying to use uh, Chaos Center using API, right? Because uh, you all you know want to um, um, uh, integrate the same Chaos Center in your CI/CD pipelines and any other use cases, right? So in that case, the IP tests are also uh, going at it. Thanks to Aman, he has been uh, working with us in adding um, these tests for uh, you know having confidence in our APIs. So um, this was it on the updates. Uh, in, I also see that there are some uh, new uh, community members here. So there is a documentation site that is docs.witmaskios.io. You can check out this. Um, like in case you are just getting started, uh, you can come here and check the advanced installation. So you will see like which which installation you want to you know go through. You can check this documentation. And in case you are the you know uh, you are already using Chaos Center that is 2.5.2 version and you want to upgrade, you can uh, come here and and you can check this flow, uh, how you want to upgrade the same. So this will be available in the documentation. And in case you are facing any issues, we will always um, available in the Slack channel. So you can always fire your questions there. Um, yeah, so installation and uninstall uh, for the uh, both the scopes, we have instructions here as well and upgrade steps are also available here. So in the end, there are shout outs. I have um, yeah, given that uh, Victor and Aman for you know giving the good uh, features and tests that we have in this release and others as well the existing contributors. So yeah, thanks everyone like um, for all the contribute uh, contributions and you know queries uh, you uh, raise in the channel right they help us in enhancing Chaos Center uh, with good features as well as you know fixing in case there are some issues right. So yeah, that's um, all from my side. Um, in case and if anyone has any questions, I can take those. I have a question. Yeah. So you uh, written here in that uh, you have enhanced the API tests. Is there somewhere a link where we can see the latest test results from the current update from the two six? Uh, yeah. So uh, let me. I'll show you. So, <clears throat> so currently, uh, we are using this framework that is Cypress. We are using that for you know uh, testing our APIs. Mm -hmm. So currently, like uh, these tests, we are uh, still in the process of you know developing and uh, you know adding those tests. So currently, those tests are you know we are running you know manually. Currently, they are not in the pipeline, but they have been added here. I can share the um, um, I would say link in the chat so you can also check the api test here also like in case you want to see in case you know there are some test report or issues that we are facing or we are getting so there is an issue that we are using for tracking different issues in here so you can check that as well but yeah currently like this is not in a pipeline yeah we are running it manually currently it is in development phase so yeah is there any play uh, any 
roadmap for putting it to the pipeline so it will be done automatically yeah yeah yeah. it will be done automatically in the github actions in the same repository you will find it so it will be running you know on the daily purpose in the nightly build pipelines perfect yeah thank you very much yeah thanks for asking it we're done uh, probably you can just show the current t2 dashboard also so that we uh whatever we have yeah 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 so uh we also have this um it should be yeah so this is the e2e dashboard that we have um let me check maybe my internet is having some issues i can uh share this link as well in the chat i think my internet is having some issues okay it came yeah so this a link i can share uh here like we have different uh pipelines uh if you see so for example uh for chaos center this is this one is the pipeline so for portal if you see there are different test runs going on uh on a daily basis and similar like there's a table yeah so this is a table that we have so this runs on a daily basis and the, uh like this one is for portal but you know uh, we have different experiments so gcp related pipeline and then there are aws related pipeline vmware related pipeline and then you know node level experiments spot level experiments so everything uh you can you know check those um uh, pipeline runs here you will get the results so yeah i can uh, share this link as well in the chat So, um, any more questions? I can, yeah. Thank okay. you. Yeah, I'm stop sharing my screen. All right. Thanks, everyone. Uh, thanks a lot, Vedant. Uh, thanks a lot uh, for updating the community on what's uh, happening latest in the community. And uh, folks, if you have any questions, we'll open the floor for Q&A in the end so you can you can ask your questions again. So I'll, I'll quickly share my screen. Uh, I'll, I'll just be sharing about uh, uh, Chaos Carnival and what exactly has, has taken place. Obviously Chaos Carnival uh, was, was an amazing conference and uh, Litmus was obviously one of the community partners. There were a lot of talks based on Litmus. So as you can see my screen, I'll be obviously talking one by one, uh, just give you an overview and also also share the link to all the talks that are available out there i mean their uh, chaos engineering as a technology has developed so much that uh, there are talks based on ai ml on chaos engineering there are use cases user stories that have come up uh, the community members have have talked about how you can use chaos engineering what are the use uh, i mean specific use cases that they are applying how monitoring and observability has has taken course and what are the uh, i mean how do you left shift your slos so let's go through one by one obviously the the chaos carnival event started off with a couple of talks both both based on litmus so one of them was obviously covered by a community member hendrik uh, who, who talked about uh, i mean how chaos engineering is working for his own system how chaos engine i mean what are the configurations that you can make to, to make your workloads reliable and then uh, how basically chaos engineering is being used in production and he did that using litmus and then moving on we had michael who who shared one of his debug debugging stories or as you know that the developer persona is shifting towards chaos engineering in some way or the other so he he took us to the first steps via metrics slos and app instrumentation quality gates in ci cd and all that stuff uh through uh, to talk about uh, chaos engineering and monitoring, how, how do you shift from monitoring to observability and left shift your SLOs with chaos. So th these talks are already available and I have jotted down them in a blog. The blog will be out soon, perhaps post the community call itself, but I'm covering them one by one and post that Siam, obviously one of the community members, CNCF ambassadors, he talked about what to look forward to in the chaos engineering landscape in 2022, how Litmus has come uh, this far and how 
the landscape has changed, how, how chaos engineering would fare, what, what are the functionalities that Litmus provides to make it uh, go further. And then we had Akram, I think he's also part of the call. Perhaps I'll also allow him to talk about a little bit about the, uh, his talk. And he, he talked about a user story where how chaos engineering is being integrated with Jenkins uh, after QA testing. And, and that was covered in a new stack blog as well available in the community. So perhaps uh, talking before talking more about Akram's talk, I think I'll allow Akram to talk about his, his talk himself. Thank you. Thank you, Bradley. Uh, so, um... Well, um, I've been so delighted to, to, uh, to present that. Uh, the talk was about what I have done with uh, in talent. Um, in talent, so we have begin by integrating uh, case engineering with all with our within our DevOps pipeline. So before promoting to to production our apps, we uh, we do as usual QA testing. Then we have uh, decided to use Litmus. Uh, litmus chaos after that to validate the resilience of the app and then uh, update our uh, our deployments or the image uh, at the deployments that are they that uh, are already deployed in kubernetes then do the tests and uh, inject the um, and send the report to slack so everyone get notified with the uh, the report uh, well the report is that what uh, we can see from the experiments like uh, the verdict the verdict and the uh, resilience score that will be sent to to Slack to and get uh, and get and it will be seen by everyone uh, concerned. Uh, that was talk, and uh, now we are going to uh, to pass this, um, to use Litmus to to, to move uh, to more to move further to uh, to inject Litmus um, with our infrastructure within our infrastructure to and to enlarge the blast radius and we're going to to pass the DevOps pipeline and to um, to hit the um, the infrastructure such as nodes and uh, and so on nodes in azure and aws it will be like a multi multi cloud yes that's it Thanks a lot, Akram. Thanks a lot for uh, highlighting on on your journey with uh, talent on on the litmus adoption and also for for delivering an amazing talk on chaos engineering alongside litmus and Jenkins. So next up, obviously, we had Nick Jen, another community member for uh, uh, from Dynatrace, who, who obviously covered a lot on on how DevSecOps is is coming into the chaos engineering fray, how your organization can use chaos engineering, uh, especially using litmus. I mean, obviously there is a scoring system that, that is being used to promote releases on the production side. And they, they, they covered a lot of things on how developers, engineers, and engineering managers can benefit from using not just the Dynatrace platform, but from, from the good practices that surround DevOps and, and chaos engineering for the least. So, so that was it. And then obviously we, we had another community member, Michael, talking about uh, how, how they have uh, configured Kubernetes for reliability. There was a course that was already out there. And then he covered a lot on the architecture side of things, uh, on how, how Litmus is being deployed on Kubernetes workflow, workloads and and how the reliability pipelines, I mean, how all the tooling for the reliability pipeline can be deployed uh, in, in the Kubernetes target cluster. And lastly, we had Nilajit from the community introducing Litmus, how, how Litmus is being used on the non-Kubernetes side of things, as you have seen. The experiments available on the Chaos Hub, so he, he covered a lot of non kts experiments and, and goes through a live demo for you all. So this all will be shared in the blog, of course, but I'm, I'm sharing the link to the Chaos Carnival uh, website, which has all uh, the recorded sessions available from the keynotes to, to all the stuff that has happened in, uh, over the course of the conference. There have been so much that has been discussed from Chaos Engineering for Ethereum blockchain to, I mean, Chaos Engineering in multi-tenant and hybrid environments, how empathy is important, from, from the community aspect, from the SLO aspect. So that there's a lot that is available as, as a community for, for everyone here. 
and folks can can just go to the chaos carnival website and find it available in in terms of increasing their chaos engineering knowledge or to just just go through what litmus is and how the community is faring so with this i think i, I would like to conclude uh, the the agenda items that we had in hand for for the community call i'll i'll just open the floor for some questions you all can check the chaos carnival website and feel free to let us know if if you have any questions or doubts and and if if there is any talk that that is missing or something like that but uh, looking forward to seeing you in the community with with more such content and questions so let's let's just Uh, if you have any questions, you can just ask to the maintainers and contributors and I'll, I'll stop sharing my screen. Uh, do we, do we have any questions? I guess not. All right, folks. I think uh, with this we can we can conclude uh, the community call for today. I think it was a real quick one with uh, with on sharing the updates and all on the Chaos Carnival side. So, folks, uh, feel free to ask your questions in the Litmus Slack. We'll we'll be again meeting next month, the third Wednesday. And uh, thanks a lot, folks, for joining in. We'll we'll be looking forward to your questions and and contributions in the community. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thanks all.